welcome back. This is the fourth part in the Character Sculpt tutorial series where I go through my entire workflow from start to finish. If you're joining in for the first time and want to get caught up, links to the previous parts of the series are in the description below. Last time we finished sculpting our base and now it's time to get the quad count back down. Okay, let's re-topologize this head, but first, we really don't need these references hanging around anymore over here in the outliner. Let's hide these. And before we jump into it, let's kind of make ourselves a roadmap on what we're going to do. We'll go into sculpt mode with the head selected. And then we scroll down on our tools here and we'll see the paintbrush. And this is just like a regular paintbrush. You can draw on the sculpt and we're going to use this to kind of map everything out. I've got my strength all the way up and I've got my radius on pressure sensitivity. Let's choose a color and start painting out our important loops. If we break this up into sections, it's going to be easier to handle. So we know for sure there is a loop that goes around the eye. And I also want another loop to go on the inner part of the eye. Do you see where the crease is right here for the eyelid? I want to make sure definitely that I put one there. We'll put another loop in right next to the eyeball but we won't worry about painting that out we're going to have a section that will go from here and it will follow our eye down and then it'll come around connect into itself down here follow the nose down come around bump back into the chin and then right here where it connects to the brow this will come up to our hairline it'll come around like this come down to the ear down to the jaw comes all the way around and meets up at the chin right below the green that we painted. It'll come all the way over to the edge and meet up with the red. Our nose is another section that we're going to have to do. We've got the lips. We're going to want a loop that runs around the lips. We'll have to have a loop that goes around the ear. Let's just mark out this area here. That way we know where the ear is. Now we can hide it. That way the ear is not going to be in the way. Let's also mark down here where the very edge of the neck is. That way we can hide the body and it won't be in the way anymore. It should be everything mapped out. If we come down here in our tools and we go down to color filter, we can switch this to brightness and then click and drag to the right and it'll brighten this up. That way it's not as intrusive, not as bright in our faces. Let's jump back into object mode and shift A to add a plane. Tab into edit mode. Let's scale this thing down so it'll be a little easier to see. Go in front view. And let's move this up. With everything in this plane selected, let's hit M and merge at center. M is the merge menu. Pops up this menu here. And let's just click at center. It collapsed everything down into one vertex. And let's turn on snapping. It's up here at the top. And in the drop down menu, we can choose which snap mode we want. We want face project and project to individual elements. So now when we hit G to grab and we move it, it will snap onto the face. So let's put it in the corner here where these three colors meet the white, blue, and the red because that is going to be a pole. And let's hit E to extrude. We'll come down this corner and we'll go to this one. We'll just Hit all the colored corners. Let's get right here next to this black line too. And we'll get the corner at the top here and then shift click the vert that we started with and hit F and that'll fill it in. Now let's select all of our verts. Let's hit E for extrude and S for scale. Let's pull it in just a little bit. And it's a little hard to see because clipping through the mesh, there's clipping through the sculpt. So let's go over here to our object properties, scroll down and click in front. Okay, let's grab these vertexes and let's move them right to the edge of the blue and the red. I just like to pull them away and then pull them back so I can see. I'm just going to line these up about like that. All right, let's uh, add a few edge loops. Control R adds an edge loop. So we'll just click in between these. We'll put one in between each one that we created. Once we get our edge loops in, let's move everything over to where the colors change. Line it up with the guide that we made. Let's move this guy over a little bit. It's a little too close. Okay, select the inner loop. Let's hit E, extrude, and scale it down again. Now we're gonna line this up with the very ridge of the eyelid. And then one more time, select the loop, E and S. Just let it click down once. And now we're gonna to try to get it right to the corner of the eye. We don't have to be super precise with this. 
Don't worry about your edges overlapping the eye. We're just worried about our vertices not snapping onto the eye. Okay, let's go down here to our modifiers, add modifier, and we'll do a mirror. Turn on clipping. And in the front view, let's grab these three verts here. Hit E for extrude and then X so it will stay on the X axis. Pull it to the left and it will clip into itself and merge those middle verts together. Left click to accept and you can see that it's kind of inside of the head. So in front view with them still selected, hit G to grab them and then left click to accept it and then it will, it'll, it'll snap it onto the front. Now let's grab these two verts here. We'll extrude them down to where this blue meets the green right at the edge of the nose and then we'll extrude it down to the tip of the nose. We'll grab them again, extrude down the nose to where the nostril starts, get it about in the corner there and then we'll come down to the base of the nostril and we'll leave it right there for now. Let's grab these two, extrude it down about right there. Let's keep this on the ridge of the nose. Let's extrude it down again. Like I said before, on the ridge of the nose. And then we can grab these two verts. Since it's filled in on both the sides, we can just hit F and it'll fill it in for us. Now with these two selected, let's extrude this down. We'll bring this vert down to the corner of the chin where it meets the blue and this one to the corner here where we made that turn. And then we'll extrude it all the way to the middle over here. Let's snap in the middle. Then we can line them up with our colors. Let's add an edge loop over here to the right. We'll drag it over. Get it lined up with our colors. We'll add one to the bottom down here. This helps round out this loop a little bit. Okay, let's grab these two verts. We'll extrude it down the side of the nose and we're gonna try to keep it on the crease as best as we can. Next, let's grab this middle vert. We'll extrude it down to the nostril here. And then we'll fill these in. Select all four of them and hit F and it will fill it. And then down here at the bottom, let's select this vert hit extrude over and then click this one and hit F and we'll fill in this one now let's select these four verts let's get to where we're looking right up the nose E for extrude S to scale and we'll scale it down kind of small we'll click to accept hit G and click to snap it in there then hit F and it fills in that square and then we'll add an edge loop right there Remember to snap it in there. So there's the inside of the nostril. Let's go up here to the top. Let's select these top verts. We'll select from here over to here. You can uh, click the first vert. If you hold down shift and control and then click the last vert, it'll, click, it'll select everything in between. So we'll hit E to extrude and we'll just bring it up close to where the blue is. And then we'll move these guys into place. Something like that. Now let's start extruding down. We'll add as many vertices as we see over here on the left. So one here, one right there, and one right there. So let's select these two. Start hitting F to flood fill these. And with these last two selected, let's hit E. Let's extrude it down to the corner of the jaw here. We'll bring this one up about right there. And then we'll extrude these down one more time. Bring this to the very corner and bring this one down to the bottom. Now let's extrude these out to the corner here. You can just get that one close if you want to. And then we can select both of these, hit M, and then merge at center. And then these last two, we can just take a vert, extrude it out to the center, and then we can fill these in. There we go. Over here we see we've got two loops running into the eye up here. So let's make sure that we have two loops down at the bottom. We've got one loop running over here, so let's make sure we have a loop over here. Now if we select this middle loop here, and then go to face and grid fill, it'll fill it in. Let's choose a span of two, and let's rotate it. There we go. All right, um, I'd like to spin this around the ear here, but it looks like it's getting in the way when we when we turn the corner, we're looking at the back of our faces. So let's go up here into the viewport shading menu and let's click on back face culling. Now all the back faces should be hidden, but it looks like 
we've got a few faces that aren't so that means that the, their normals are flipped around backwards you see how we can see through them on this side so if we hit A and then hit Alt and N this is our normals menu we can choose recalculate outside and it flipped the ones that were facing the wrong way it flipped them towards the outside so now we can come around the side here and we won't see we won't see the the back faces well you can still see our outlines and our verts and stuff here but it's a little bit more manageable so what do we have one two three four five of these let's just match that we'll put five on the back one two three four five and then we'll hit F on that last one to connect it maybe rearrange these just a little bit to space them out a little bit more okay Okay, let's work on the mouth area. Let's grab everything under the nose. So from the middle over to the right edge of the nostril. Let's extrude this down to the very edge of the lips. We don't want to go into the lips. We just want to go over to the edge of the color. Put an edge loop here in the middle. That way we can start connecting these pieces together. Select these four and we'll fill it in. Move it up just a little bit so we can get a little bit more room. All right, here on the bottom, we're going to grab these bottom two verts at the chin and we're going to bring it up to the edge of the bottom lip and then we'll fill in these four verts that fills into the corner over there let's just move this back down let's add a couple edge loops into the chin that way everything matches the top everything on the bottom matches the top now let's select this entire loop hit E to extrude and we'll scale it just a little bit just to get it started now let's start bringing everything to the mouth opening we'll just pull everything down we don't want to mess with the corner. If you need to, you can turn off the mirror modifier for a minute if you need to kind of see what you're doing. So let's add an edge loop. We want to put the loop right on the sharp part of the lip so we can grab the top ones here and just edge slide them up. You could do that with GG with whatever you have selected. It'll slide the vert along the edge. And that's our mouth finished. All right, let's uh, go up to the top of the head. Let's extrude a vert out, that way we can fill in this square. And we're gonna bring this around the head. Actually, let's um, let's extrude one more vert out. We'll fill in this, this square too. Now at the edge of this one, we can start extruding out to the center. And don't, don't worry about how many you're putting down. We can take care of that later, if we have too many or too few. All right, we'll go ahead and bring this next row across too. That'll get us closer to the top, so we can be able to use top view and see what we're doing a little bit better. Bring it all the way out to the center. Select these two verts and just start hitting F. Let's grab these three here at the hairline. Press 7 to get into the orthographic top view. Look we'll extrude up. Let's uh, straighten these up just a little bit here. And let's go up again. Trying to match what we have on the right. And we'll stop right here. And then down here we'll just fill these along until we get to the end over here. Let's move these around a little bit and what the heck is that? Mmm, don't remember doing that. Let's get rid of it. But uh, we can finish filling in this last plane here and it uh, looks like we kind of lucked out and accidentally chose the right amount right off the bat. Got a big old gap here so we can maybe slide these forward just a little bit. Let's just move these around just a little bit, cleaning up. Okay, underneath here we've got this circle. This marks where our neck is going to be. So we don't want to bring anything into that area. Let's select these two verts and we'll pull them all the way into the center. And let's pull them up forward so we can avoid that neck. And let's rotate around. Let's skip the next face. And then we'll pull this one up. And we'll skip the next one pull this one up. And then we can fill in the ones in between by selecting the, the two edge verts and just hitting F. Now we can come up to the end up here. We'll extrude this one halfway at an angle. Extrude it into the center. We can fill in these faces. Let's make a little bit of room here. Let's grab this one. We'll extrude it down and over to the center. We can fill the top one in and it looks like we need an extra vert right here. So let's put a loop cut in right there. We'll move it over to match. Now we can fill those in and that should take care of underneath the chin. We'll worry about cleaning that up later. 
We can finish filling the rest of these in. We'll extrude this one down to the neck. This will allow us to fill this one in. Then we can get our remaining verts on the back of the head. We'll pull those down. We can bring this one over here. We can merge these two together. Put in an edge loop and then we can fill the rest of these in. All right, looks like that's just about everything. We just have the ear left to do. All right, let's unhide the ear. Make sure that you apply your mirror modifier. Now where we've got everything in front, it looks like it would be pretty tough to do this ear. So what we can do is select the loop that we're going to be extruding into the ear and then hold down shift and press H. That'll hide everything except for what we have selected and we should have a little bit of an easier time. Let's get ourselves into a view where we can see the loop pretty well. We'll turn snapping off, we'll select the loop, and we'll extrude scale it just a little bit. We'll turn snapping back on. Now these new verts that we made, let's bring them over to the edge where the ear meets the head. Okay, now that we have that, let's select these two verts. We can go into top view and we'll extrude it around the rim of the ear. We can make a long pass here and we'll just add in edge, edge loops later. We'll rotate around, let's bring it down a little bit and then we'll bring it around the bottom. And I know it's, I know it's kind of hard to see because of um, all of our geometry in the way. Sometimes you just gotta pan around till you find the right angle. All right, let's bring this one down and we'll connect it to this one. We should have a loop going all the way around the ear now. All right, let's get into the side view a little bit so we can select all of these back parts of the ear that we're not gonna worry about right now. Let's hide those, that way they won't be in the way. Let's add a couple loop cuts in here. That way we can get this stick into the ear a little bit better. Just get yourself at a good angle, hit G to grab, and then click to snap it. We'll do the same thing on the top here. All right, let's select the entire loop. We'll extrude scale it. Bring it down just a little bit, and then we'll bring all the verts over to the edge of the ear. All right, let's extrude scale again. Now we want to try to get it right into this little corner here. I'm gonna snap all these into the corner. Okay, so I'd like the flow to follow along with this little ridge on the inside of the ear. So I'm gonna try to put a couple of loop cuts in. That way I'll be able to run a plane across it. So let's just fill this in to make one long plane. We'll put a loop cut in the middle here and then we'll move it over to give it the angle and then down here we'll just start filling it in okay so we ended up with um, too many verts down here we've got five so let's grab the middle ones here we'll hit Control b to bevel we'll slide that around and that should give us enough let's move this into shape here now we should have enough verts to fill these quads in all right let's take the middle We'll extrude it out. Try to get close to the other verts. Bring this one up and let's fill it in. And up here at the end, let's double click. Looks like we've got six verts here, so we should be able to fill it. Let's go up here to face, grid fill, see what happens. You know what, that's gonna be fine. All right, let's go to the back. Alt-H unhides everything. Now let's select the loop right here on the edge here. Shift-H to hide everything but what we had selected. And we've got an odd number of um, verts here so we're gonna end up with a triangle unless we figure something out but for now let's just start filling these in we'll start at the base of the ear and uh, we'll just pull some geometry out that way we can kind of get away from the head so we're not cramped up we got a little bit more space to work in so we'll just fill some of these faces in see what happens when we get up to the end okay we have a triangle left which I figured we would let's see where these run to if we try to put an edge loop in. This one runs around the front. Let's put one in, take a look where it went. Okay, that runs over around the cheek and over the over the lip. That's actually all right. So we'll leave that there and running that edge loop into the back end of that triangle turned it into a quad. Pull it out and make it a little bit more diamond shaped and that should be fine. I'm all right with that. All right, so that pretty well takes care of um, doing the retopology, the modeling part of it. All that's left now is the cleanup, and uh, the cleanup isn't that bad. There's a few tools that we can use to help us out with the cleanup. We have our smooth tool down here on the tool menu here. If we select a patch over here, it gives us a little yellow pin that we can push or pull, and um, 
it'll smooth out the vertices. You have to be careful around edges like this open spot on the eye. If you pull it here, you can see that it'll push and pull the verts. Sometimes in places that you don't want. Um, if you're going to use the smooth tool, you want to make sure that you deselect anything that's going to be hanging off the edge or into the mirror modifier because it, it can split it. So we can push and pull. It can smooth the verts. Um, it can be helpful at some time, usually, sometimes, usually with big uh, grid filled patches, it can, it can usually help out. But I prefer to use the relax slide brush in sculpt mode. So if we go into sculpt mode down here, down here in our tools, we've got slide relax. Now one thing about using this is we can't really see our edges that well. So we'll have to go into our object properties and turn on wireframe in order to see our edges. Now this brush is kind of like the grab brush and it's kind of like a comb brush. And the way it works is it tries to move the verts the way that you push them without destroying the shape. So it's, it's trying to move the topology while keeping the same volume and form. Now this works out pretty well if you add a shrink wrap modifier because it won't push anything in or out. It'll just slide them around. Just like the other brushes, you can hold down shift to smooth but the smooth setting for the slide relax is different from the other brushes. If you smooth with it, it'll try to find the average distance between the edges and it will slide them into place. So yeah, use, using the, uh, the smooth brush, the, the shift with the slide relax selected, it'll help bring things into place. Sometimes you just gotta be careful if you got a mirror modifier on. You don't wanna get close to the center. It can rip the center away from itself, just like the relax tool can. You wanna stay away from the lips because you've got an open part there. We don't want it to mess up the, um, the topology around the lips. It'll wanna squish it or pull it away. Okay, next up, let's add a subdivision surface modifier. Let's apply the mirror modifier. We'll apply the subdivision modifier at level one. And then once we have it applied, let's turn on x-ray mode, select half of the model and don't get any of the middle verts and delete the left half or the right half. It doesn't matter which half, but delete half of it. Put on the mirror modifier. And uh, the reason why we do this is modifiers, most of the time you need to apply them from top to bottom. If you were to apply the subdivision surface modifier first, you'd have these weird artifacts around the lips and around the opening of the neck hole. All right, so let's go into object mode. That way we could select it and right click and shade smooth. Yeah, it's, it's it still looks low poly. So let's add a subdivision surface modifier. We'll put it up to level two. It's got more geometry now, but it's uh, it kind of looks like melted wax, like a melted wax figure. But there's different things that we can do we could add a multi-resolution modifier and shrink wrap it to the original sculpt and apply it. And then within that multi-res, it will have all of the detail from the original sculpt. But instead, let's try to keep it a little bit more simple and light. So let's go into edit mode and let's select these verts that run along the brow and kind of down the nose a little bit here. And you see over here in our item menu under our transform, we've got mean crease and if we pull this up to the right you can see it's starting to sharpen up that crease where the brow line is we can see it over here on the mirrored side a little bit better because it doesn't have all those vertexes but as we pull it up and down you can see that crease getting sharper and what this is doing is telling the subdivision surface modifier not to smooth out that area to keep it sharp so we can put one here on the nose we can go under here between the nostrils we can put one there we could probably, let's um, let's go into x-ray here so I can get this vert. We could probably just wrap around the nose here. Let's go all the way up here. We'll just tighten all that up. Makes that nice and sharp. Let's come off the nostril and go all the way down to the corner of the mouth. It's pretty subtle, but you can see the shadow line. So you get the idea. We can use this to sharpen up the lips, that area under the lips. We can use it to sharpen up the jaw. And we can use this in the ear to help accentuate some of these edges. So that's the head retopology finished. There's nothing special about it. It's pretty generic and basic, but 
it works for what we're going to need it for and once we retop of the body it'll make a really good base mesh for future sculpts speaking of retopoing the body we're retopoing the body next time all right <laughs>